This is my review on RetroFi, which is a lo-fi VST plugin from Waze Audio that works on both Windows and Mac and in all DAWs. So I will weigh in with my hot takes towards the end of the video and I definitely wanna hear yours in the comments section. I will have links in the description box if you wanna check it out. There are affiliate links that help support this channel at no additional cost to you. But I do recommend that you try out the demo first before you buy it, even though right now it is on sale. So it is a very good time to check it out. I'll walk through some of the different features of it because it has four different modules, unlike the Lo-Fi Space plugin, which had one module because it was a scaled down version. And if you was able to get that plugin, let me know in the comments section. I know it's a little petty for me to mention that, but it was hard to get it. Let's begin. Tramtendo. So let me start off by playing the track that I made uh, without retro fi on. And I did make it on the MPC. I'm just using the MPC software right now with it in controller mode. So let's go ahead and turn it on and let's hear it in its glory. So I'm not gonna get into full detail. The first time, my first impression at least, uh, when I heard it, I was like, wow, this is a little too much off the low end. So what I saw was this mix knob right here, which you can lock this parameter knob, you can parallel and stuff. Let's hear that. And that's everything inside of it right now. I just turned the mix down. So what I'm gonna do is go through the presets so that way that you have a good gist of how it will sound and all the cool presets that it comes with because it comes with a lot. Let's go. So I'm not gonna lie to you, the first time that I saw this plugin, I wasn't really impressed. I thought the UI was kind of ugly too, which I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But yeah, once I started playing with some of the parameters, I started having a firmer understanding of what they're doing. And this is actually a pretty decent plugin. So getting into the UI here, there's a couple of things that I wanna talk about. So we already know that Waze plugins usually come at a small size. So at 100%, it was a pretty small on my 1080p resolution screen. So 1920 by 1080, by the way. Uh, but, you know, I could change the size of it. I can go up to like 150 and then it becomes humongous. And then uh, at 200, it's pretty unbearable on the screen for what it is. But uh, for the most part, I think I will stick with this uh, view so that I don't have to do so much zooming. Boom. So... Now that we have RetroFi on, uh, what I'm gonna do is just do a full reset, by the way. So I'm gonna go over here, select the full reset preset, boom. Now, RetroFi has three, four different lanes, to be honest, that you can turn on and off uh, by using this parameter right here. So uh, what I wanna do is focus on device first. So you can pick out different uh, devices from time from the styler 
parameter right over here. Let's hear that. And then you can affect it with tone to give it some more lo fi ness to it, if that's a word, but. And if you pay attention to this area right here, you can see that there is EQ curving right here. So which, which is pretty uh, special in itself, uh, pretty clever, I would say. Uh, but moving on, you have what you call squash, which if I'm not mistaken would be a compressor. So let's hear that. And then you have a ringer. So let's go ahead and hear that, which I think that's ring modulator, uh, which I think is ring modulation. So let's hear that. And then like I've noted at the beginning of this video, uh, you have a mix knob. So right now it's at 50%. Let's go ahead and just shove it on down to about 100% and hear it. So just by messing with the device area right here, the device module, you, you can get a lot going and not mess with space. So space is echo and reverb. It's already uttered right here in the UI. So yeah. So that wraps up space right there and you have different parameters where you can control either MS like milliseconds if that's your thing or you can set it to a BPM and it will of course be linked to your host but you also have your host BPM right here. So you can choose to change things either right here on this part of the parameter which is the display which I think is very cool. So going to the next part is noise, which is very important for a lo-fi because everybody likes that ambient noise 24 seven type stuff. have different noise settings too. So we have cassette, cassette two and cassette three. And you, can, and you can choose to do pre or post and change the level and the threshold, which is pretty cool. I think that's something that a lot of lo-fi plugins miss. Let's check out digital. So this thing is pretty loaded for just that part alone for noise. Again, free plugin. Uh, I can't really complain because it's kind of pooping on a lot of lo-fi <laughs> plugins out right now, uh, to be honest, because man, uh, the market is kind of lacking in that area. So we have mechanics too. Uh, this module uh, is kind of the wow and flutter of this particular plugin. So let's go ahead and hear that. Uh, 
last but not least is this area right here, which, you know, every last one of these are routed through each other. So device is first, space is second, noise is third, mechanics is fourth. And then we have this area right here, which you can finalize and you can do high pass filtering. <laughs> Low pass filtering. And you can make something be completely mono if you want it that way so that you can have kind of the same balance. And you can adjust your input. So if the beat is too low after you're processing it, you can kind of boost it in. Uh, do keep in mind that they allow you to have some monitoring here so it's the beat is already hot so i would just go ahead and you know I, I'll, I'll lower it down and then you can adjust it on the output too as well so it's fully loaded uh one of the things that i really like about it is it's fully featured and that's a good thing. Last but not least, if you have a preset that you like, of course you can save it. Uh, I would just be mindful of where you save it, you know, right here on my Windows laptop that is. Uh, you see it's users, public, waves, audio, plugin settings, retro, fi, and yeah, you could just name it whatever you want. You know, I'll just name it av lo-fi so you can get a gist of it. Boom, and app lo-fi is there. Then you can see in the user presets, that ab low fi is right there. So, tell me how you feel about this video. I definitely wanna hear from you guys in the comments section. Uh, do you think retro fi is worth it? And I'll just break it down in my pros and cons. So, I guess some of the cons would probably be uh, this at least uh, with the UI. And I think the UI in itself is a bit creative because the whole referencing point was the lo fi girl channel or what used to be called chill cow. Uh, but it ended up looking like the Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> which I guess is still kind of a good thing because it's a throwback TV show. So uh, shout out to the content creator that <laughs> referenced that. But as far as this functionality, I had to weigh it down like this because there are so many free lo-fi plugins out there that do does a whole bunch. But when you break it down as far as the different modules in terms of the section where you would create the different devices all the way to the ambience, uh, there's a myriad of choices for you to pick so you can go any which way with it and the fact that they kind of uh, built a sequencer in between the middle of it with the reverb it gives it a different take if you look through some of the pre presets you will see that you know there's some worthiness when you want to combine it with synthesizers the cpu uses is pretty low for waste plugin sometimes waste plugins could be a little cpu intensive but this one I guess this is an effect, it's, it goes a long way here. So, do I give this the stamp of approval? Well, given the circumstances, I would say about 75% yes. Pretty darn good, Waves. Pretty darn good.